Welcome to The Rock Backstage Pass. With thanks to our good friends at the Hard Rock Cafe. Camilla, take it away. Hi, it's Camilla here from The Rock. We're here with the Backstage Pass with Frederick from Opeth. <laughs> did you start playing? I played violin for a couple of years uh, but I wasn't very into it and then I think I got my first guitar when I was nine years old. Okay. My dad taught me a couple of uh, like a blues uh, rhythm thing and uh, then I got an electric guitar. Mm -hmm. I, I liked Angus Young and Ace Freely a lot okay, when I was nine I think eight nine <coughs> mm -hmm. but I didn't practice much then. And what was your first guitar? It was a Les Paul copy. I've been a Les Paul copy. Mm -hmm. The same uh, mm -hmm. color as uh, Ace Freely used uh, most frequently. So okay. I was pretty happy with that. Uh, but when I was about 13, that's when I started practicing a lot. Like I saw Michael Schenker and Edwin Halen and Ulle Roth and Yves Ronstein. Mm -hmm. That inspired me to practice a lot more. Before that, I thought it was a trick. That <laughs> It's just a trick to learn it, you know. Yeah. Just <laughs> You just have to come up, uh, figure out that trick. I didn't go to high school when I was younger. I started working at a factory when I was 16 uh, to just buy my first amps, basically. Mm -hmm. I was totally guitar nerd. And what did you do before Opeth? What, 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 where did you start? Did you, how many bands were you in before? Uh, when I was a kid, I was in, played with this band called Talisman, and they were from Rising Force with Ingrid Malmsteen. So it's, it was a bit more melodic uh, hard rock stuff, mm -hmm. but a lot of solos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I was into I'm a Viking and that Ingrid stuff at the time, so I thought it was pretty cool. And um, th those guys were a generation older than me, but uh, it was a good school learning mm. school for me, you know, since they were more experienced. They tore, opened up for ACDC and Judas Priest and stuff. And then they That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So um, that was the first like the professional band I joined, and then I had a. Uh, my own band for a while, Southpaw, but then I couldn't really live off the music. And then uh, I was in a band called Crux, which is a doom metal band with guys from Entombed and Candlemas. Mm -hmm. So I did three albums with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, th after that, I got the gig with Arch Enemy that I played with for what, 150 shows, one and a half year. It was just intense touring. That's really intense. Yeah. And then. Um, um, the other Amot brother, Chris Amot, wanted to come back to the band, mm -hmm. so I had to step out. Okay. And then a couple of months after that, Michael rang me up, the short story, mm -hmm. and asked me to join Opeth. So Great. That's the basic of my history, I guess. Okay. That's pretty good. Um, and there's, you've mentioned a couple of names already, but I was wondering about your personal musical influ influences, because there's such a variety in the music that you play in Opeth. And there's a lot of genres that you touch on as well. Yeah. What is it that you're into? Who influences you? Um, when I was younger, it was like the Guitar Hero guys. But now I listen more to like Guthrie Trap, Nashville country players and stuff like that. I try to find inspiration from different sources than the, the, the metal heroes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love that. But yeah. um, it, hopefully you can find more personal style mm -hmm. if you find influences mm -hmm. elsewhere. But I listen to everything from, you know, like Django Reinhardt to Dark Throne and everything from Great. jazzy stuff to black metal stuff, basically. So it's fun to play with Michael yeah. uh, because he knows so many bands, obscure bands from the 70s, prog rock and mm -hmm. stuff that I've never heard about. So I get introduced to a lot of music mm -hmm. through Michael as well. And um, he's a vinyl collector and uh, I've turned into one of those as well now. So. Yeah. That's what we do when we tour. We, we go out searching for vinyl. And okay, yeah, great. And some vinyls I just have to buy, like Rising with Rainbow or like yeah, oh Don't yeah. Break the Oath with Merciful Fate. I always yeah. buy them, even though I have a few. With the extensive touring that you've done so far, you've, you've, you've played some festivals and you've played venues when you headlined. Which, which is the preferable for you? The, the big festivals with the massive crowds or just open fans that are in the venue? What is it that you prefer? I kind of prefer their, their, our own gigs, like tonight, we get to do proper sound check and we brought out the quite a, we try to step up our show. We have more production with us and screens and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, 
it's I think our music is more enjoyable if it's dark mm -hmm. with the lights and everything because we don't jump around like David Lee Roth or mm -hmm. Bruce Dickinson too much um, we try to but yeah we're pretty lousy <laughs> at that but um, <laughs> yeah, okay I have to do extra jumps then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well anyhow um, I kind of like both it's a great energy playing in front of a massive crowd of course and it's a good opportunity to introduce your music to s mm. hopefully some people mm. who haven't seen you but the control tonight is probably I appreciate that and also playing a longer set list and uh, yeah. it's our gig you know mm. but this is one of um, Dublin's iconic venues that you're playing tonight uh, the Olympia um, can you recall any of the um, like highlights from playing Royal Al Albert Hall or any of the other like big venues around the world that you played we try to played in the bigger cities different venues every time mm -hmm. to frame the show differently and recently we got into we played the Sydney Opera House and Radio City Hall in New York and these fantastic venues and of course it's the other day we played Palladium in London which we hadn't played before and it's a beautiful that place and it's sometimes if it's a seated crowd mm -hmm. you miss the, the energy of the mm -hmm. mosh pits and the, people go crazy that's also like that triggers a lot of energies for you on stage when you see people go crazy. It's mm -hmm. it's fun, you know, mm -hmm. as long as not anybody get hurt. Yeah. But um, uh, it's a bit more silent with the seated gigs, but it's it's beautiful. And mm -hmm. me personally, I, c I would like to sit down. I'm lazy with that. I wouldn't jump around and head back, you know. We know. <laughs> but off stage, yeah. I'm more like sipping on a beer and watching the gig. Yeah. So tonight it's a bit of both. So I'm looking forward to that. And yeah. I, I can't avoid thinking about Thin Lizzy when I'm here, you know, it's one of my favorite bands. Yes, so, yes. Um, yes. I actually played um, the song Legend of a Black Rose with Brian Downey at this Thin oh. Lizzy convent in Stockholm. Fantastic. So I got to rehearse with him and meet him, it was amazing. And how was that? That was amazing, yeah. you know, I think I practiced a week to nail that solo, but mm. almost nailed it, I think. <laughs> but um, just to be able to play with him, it was amazing and he, he still played fantastic. So. He, he does, yeah. 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 Guys, this is the top 10 questions from The Rock with Frederick from OPA. Frederick, are you ready? I'm ready. Yes, okay. So we've got 60 seconds to answer these. All right, okay. no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, no. Great. <laughs> Frederick, your favorite pastime when you're not playing? Balcony gardening. Uh, your favorite holiday destination? Uh, the west coast to in Sweden, actually, for now. Beautiful. Uh, your favorite food? Thai dish, lab guy. Favorite drink? Guinness. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Your favorite car? Um, none really. No car? Ecological. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, well, the thing is, I don't even drive because I just go with the subway. Okay. Very, very env environmental. Favorite actor? Christopher Lee. Favorite film? Right now, The Witch. Okay, great. Um, your in favorite indulgence? S chilies. Chilies, love that. Um, and the most amazing gig you've ever been to? Pink Floyd Pulse uh, 95. Okay, we like that. And finally, what's it like to be a rock star? I don't really think much about it, but um, uh, it's fantastic to be able to do what you what once was your hobby, you know, and um, and also to focus on one band. Uh, it could be very stressful. It's a lot of pressure, but um, you ha you need to be prepared. Lovely. That was a very long answer, wasn't it? That was a beautiful answer. Thank you so much, Frederick. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure My having pleasure. you. Thank you so much. Thank you.